uh, uh, but yeah, we are go. Uh, so let's uh, let's begin with the actual chess. Uh, Pepe, I think, uh, is sort of happier trying to give mate rather than anything else in chess. So, like, in the beginning, I think I should be playing slowish lines without really attempting anything outrageous. And already I've allowed something I probably should not have allowed, which is annoying. Uh, having said that, this is, I think, supposed to be a very playable uh, line of the Retzi. I should not be very unhappy about this. Uh, I say this with absolutely zero confidence, though, because I am not really, by nature, uh, a Retzi player of any kind. There is bishop a3. I don't know if I'm supposed to play bishop a3 there. I don't really want to allow knight d7, so I'll start with knight e5. Um, honestly, I feel like this is not how I should be treating this position, but it's kind of too late to turn back. We'll just have to wing it, as is, you know, people who have been watching me for the past years doing these things. They know that winging it is very much uh, how I approach most life situations. Uh... The idea, of course, is, you know, eventually we will have to play d3. And then sometimes, yeah, the, the, the inability to draw arrows will be probably for my benefit here, uh, to my benefit. Because, uh, first of all, you know, as you guys know, I'm not very good with arrows in general. And secondly, it will save me some time, uh, which I could otherwise spend trying to draw them. But you want to play g3. I think in most cases you are uh, happy to go bishop a3 and trade that pair of bishops, uh, sort of generally speaking. Um, oh, thanks uh, thanks for the sub. Yeah, I should have switched ETS on. Maybe I can still do that somehow. <sighs> Too late now, though. Bishop b4 is quite smart, I assume. Uh, and that was probably the intention of the previous move. I could also just kind of ask Pepe if he really means to keep it there, but it feels kind of uh, artificial not to play bishop d2 in this position. Like, I could go like rook e2 and ask what the next move is, sort of hinting that I want to play a3 and b4 next. But I think this is just uh, way more logical. And we're obviously taking with the queen here. Uh, I want to expand on the queen side. I want to play b4, knight a3, c5, knight c4. That kind of a that kind of a development would be sort of the ideal scenario here for white, uh, if allowed, which I don't think it will be. I assume rook b8, b6, bishop b7 is what he is uh, supposed to do here. I can try and disrupt that. In particular, after rook b8, I'm planning to go knight a3 and. Uh, um, uh, and uh, knight b5 might be a bit of an annoying threat. If he goes a5 first, we obviously are, uh, you know, planting that guy on b5 and then kind of proceeding from there. Um, doing stream-related things while I'm playing this game is probably ill-advised, but I will try. Because it's annoying me that people uh, very generously subbing to my channel right now aren't getting any recognition at all. Uh, so yeah, knight b5, queen f4 for now is not a threat, but actually kind of making a move here for black is a little bit awkward because I think e5 runs into f4. I mean, runs into is maybe a little bit strong, but I'm definitely playing f4 because I want to soften up, uh, soften up his structure. I don't currently see any refutation of f6, unfortunately for me, uh, which is, yeah, or bishop f5, honestly. I just completely missed this move even existed. I'm not sure it's that good, though, luckily for me. I think I am probably quite happy about this development because the pawn on d4 is probably sort of, the weakness of the pawn on d4 is more important than the other tactical considerations here. So... 
text to speech uh, text to speech settings uh, enable announce save let's see if that worked uh, so we can I think including rook f1 here is always going to be a good idea and then we can maybe just munch on that pawn on b7 question mark Rook b8 is a bit annoying though, because after bishop d5, rook takes b5 exists as a move, which is something I do not particularly wish to allow. Maybe just go knight d6 here, but then queen e7. I feel like I should be better, but annoyingly, I don't quite see how. Let's maybe do this, and then go knight d6 after rook b8. Hoping to establish the bishop on d5 later. And it's just kind of slightly awkward for black to make moves, hopefully. Maybe queen e7, though. I may have underestimated queen e7. Yeah, I've, I've misjudged that somewhat. And now I have to think, because uh, bishop d5... I was planning to go bishop d5, but then knight takes e5 is definitely more annoying than I originally thought. Maybe I'm still better there, but I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, this has been misplayed. Hmm. Bishop d5, knight e5, there's, like, I thought I had tactics there, but none of them appear to be working. Um, maybe queen takes a5, knight e5, do I have a move there, and knight c8, is it any good? Kind of doubt it. It might not be something he considered, though. I'm making, mainly making this move, yeah, I'm very happy about this endgame, I'm pretty sure. Um... Yeah, I think I should be able to control this passer quite comfortably. Bishop h5 is a bit of a threat. Let's get the king over to, like, uh, good squares. I'm quite happily going. Yeah, I don't know about happily. I don't know. Now knight g4 check, knight e3 is a lot stronger, but uh, Pepe didn't see it. I think once the king lands on d2, this is, this is now quite comfortably winning for me. The pawns just kind of run. I can just go with the go with the pawns and they should just win on their own pretty much. King D2 was safer. I don't know why I went with the flashy move there, but it's still fine. As long as I don't blunder something. Maybe knight B7 oh, is best. Blimey. Daddy Cool just subscribed. Yeah. I think this probably wins comfortably enough because yeah the deep one isn't going to isn't going to uh really be oh hang on I have mate in two. Mate in two is generally better than anything else. And yeah the, the text to speech and another thing is now somewhat better. Okay, um edit the scores. Nope. That's uh, not the one I wanted to edit. Uh, and then I need the, uh, the address for the second game. <clears throat> what shall I play against 1c4? I'll start sort of with my normal repertoire and go from there. Well, parts of my uh, normal repertoire anyway. This is a line which is kind of tricky and I think you are well advised to actually repeat your preparation before you do this, which I didn't, but... Yeah, and this is another, another issue with playing this line because you uh, could occasionally be forced to play the uh, what I 
in my mind call the the Murray in English because I think uh, the person who's done the most to sort of advertise this as very playable has been Michal Marin, who wrote a series of very good books on uh, this topic. I haven't actually looked at the Marin English in, in quite some time, and I, I've i read the books, well, I've skimmed through the books, but um, yeah, my knowledge is very, very, um, you know, doesn't really deserve to be called knowledge. And I'm pretty sure 97 is suboptimal, but I kind of have an idea in mind, so I'm pursuing it. Uh, I want this knight on e6, and then I want to plan something on d4 and, uh, and go from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of worried about a four, but it's it's one of those situations where it's very definitely too late to turn back. I don't really have any options anymore. I've I've hard committed to doing this. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do in this position, though. It's a very very dangerous position. It's very easy to just get outright mated in position like this. I think allowing a five would be like the easiest way to the easiest way to lose. So I'm going to try to prevent getting completely run over by five threats, or at least kind of mitigate them some somewhat. But yeah, my position is this is probably the end of the C four G six experiment because uh, yeah, these Englishes are. Mm, very, very annoying if you don't know what you're doing. I think I'm actually supposed to go for this endgame. It's, well, I mean, it, it, it's only an endgame if Pepe wants it to be an endgame, but uh, yeah, the position is bad enough for me to kind of try yeah, extreme bailout measures, or at least attempt extreme bailout measures. Uh, I'm sort of maybe a move away from being okay, but yeah, that's probably a bit optimistic. I'm not a move away from being okay here, but uh, it's a position that could improve uh, if Pepe doesn't play energetically enough, but why wouldn't he play energetically enough here? I like b3. b3 is a very nice restrained, uh, restrained choice here, reminding me that I still have no real way of dealing with the uh, hanging pawn on d6. I actually will continue ignoring it because I kind of need the queens off. I think after rook d8 f5, I just get completely run over. I assume I'm completely lost here, but uh, I like generally think this is my best practical shot, and this is uh, saying quite something about the quality of my position. Let's include a b a b just to open up the. Uh, open up the a8 rook for something and go, I don't know, knight c7. Yeah, allowing fg is not ideal. I don't know where my counterplay is supposed to come from in this position, honestly. Maybe I should have bitten the bullet and taken on f5 first. f6 was the one move which where I thought I had the answer, but maybe I'm still losing there. Yeah, it's very possible I'm still losing even after 98. I think I even know how I'm still losing after 98, but I have no other choices, so... Yeah, the issue here is that rook d8 actually wins material, uh, sadly for me. That was the one swindle I had in the position, but it's insufficient. Um, I can sort of create some waves there, but the position, I think, objectively is lost, remains lost, uh, sadly. And uh, shouldn't be very difficult to find because if he doesn't go rook d8 here, I feel like, yeah, like what else does he do? Nothing else really makes any sense. And sadly for me, I cannot take with the knight because e5 in the end wins the piece. So I have to do this and allow rook takes e8. And, uh, and then I 
have to kind of pretend I can attack some pawns on the queen side. I can probably, like, if he really wants to give mate, I assume he actually still gives mate in this position. Um, I'm oh, hoping to, limey. you know, generate some confusion somewhere. I don't exactly know where. Like, this is not really generating confusion. 96 is very, although 96, I might have rookie 6 there, uh, which, you know, Actually, the bishop 3 is hanging. What am I talking about? Uh, yeah, let's try and trade something off. If I can somehow activate both my rooks, this position uh, becomes... Well, I mean, it never becomes unclear. Uh, the position is always going to be... It's always going to be lost for me, but... Uh, it becomes a position where I can maybe ask some questions, which is sort of the best I can hope for. Uh, currently, Bishop F2, sadly for me, I will have to, um, I don't know, yeah, King G2 probably was a smart move as well, I don't know, I, I was I was about to say this is a bit of a amnesty, but it's not, uh, and uh, I'm very surprised by the fact that I appear to be the faster player of us two. This was not my expectation coming in, that I will be the one doing the flagging. Definitely was not my expectation uh, going in. King h3 is actually very strong because it's very difficult for me now to attack any of his pieces. I have to go, well, okay, let's not blunder the pawn on g6. That would be sort of the end of the game. Hmm. This gives me drawing chances now, I feel. Rook b7, but... I mean, you sometimes draw these positions. Not very often, but you sometimes do. Bishop f2, yeah, I was about to go king f7 here, which would have been a mistake. Um, The knight on a5 is kind of giving me uh, giving me hope because it's going to be a little bit of a nuisance for Pepe to get it out of the corner here. Uh, and c7, ah, oh, there's the b7 square. b7 square is annoying, but I'm still, you know, like my plan to save this position is, of course, very contingent on uh, the entire King side disappearing, so I'm still going to be aiming for that. Um, I think I might now be making a draw, which is like completely undeserved, honestly. If uh, if I somehow get away with it here, it's it's going to be so completely undeserved. But we obviously take those, you know, scraped half a points. Let me uh, let me just adjust the adjust the scores quickly. Uh, and yeah, and we'll go from there. Texas speech should appear to have failed there. I don't know why. Okay, so what did I play? I played knight of three in game one. I didn't really get... Let's see what happens if I just go e4. Maybe something good will happen, although I doubt it. Uh, I don't know. I really have no idea what to expect. Uh, uh, yeah, I should have should have known this is going to be the one and only open spanish we play i will be avoiding it like the like the proverbial plague from this game onwards don't really want to to have that particular discussion knight c5 knight d7 is one line here which i 
think is supposed to equalize for black. I'm sure there are others. The scores appear to be very scuffed, but let me try and centralize them. I think knight c5, knight d7 is still something I need to be playing around, so... Uh, I'll go rook e1. I, I just genuinely don't remember any theory here. Uh, I've looked at this on a number of occasions previously, but... That obviously doesn't guarantee anything at all. Bishop c2, knight c4, queen d3, g6, bishop h6. Can he take on b2 in that line? Maybe he can even take on b2 in that line, which would be very annoying. I don't think I have anything stronger, though. Um... It's a bit of a gamble, because obviously if knight takes b2 actually works in this position, I'm kind of screwed. Um, not like hard screwed, but uh, somewhat screwed. Uh, my plan was to just start pushing, you know, some kind of a very, very arbitrary attack on the king side here. Bishop g6, knight c4 didn't seem like it was getting me anywhere. This is obviously extremely speculative, and like speculative is a is a generous way of describing what I'm doing here. Like you want to play h4, h5, you might want to play knight g5 here, but none of those things actually generate any immediate threats. Uh, h4, h5 probably slightly more relevant in the general scheme of things. Bishop f5 worries me because obviously, uh, with a uh, you know with a healthy extra pawn I gave Pepe here, uh, he is very happily giving me this uh, structure change. Having said that, uh, no, I, it still remains true. Having said that, doesn't actually change anything in that assessment. I could go knight g5 here and kind of uh, try to muddy the waters a little bit. Probably doesn't work, but as a muddying attempt, it might be, it might be not without merit. But yeah, mainly I think uh, the open Spanish is something I should not be really uh, giving my opponent because it's it's a line I don't particularly feel confident in right now with the white pieces, and you know I should stick to my knight of three g three nonsenses. You know that particular bag of tricks is probably a better bet. I don't know why I took on f8. Now I don't exactly know what I'm supposed to do after rook takes f8. Um, maybe I could have tried for something trickier. Maybe I'm just supposed to play bishop b3 and pretend that this has all been planned. Rook a d1, h5, just kind of shuffle. I do have some, you know, minuscule compensation for the pawn here. Nothing substantial by any means, but uh, one way I've kind of self-taught myself to think about positions with the material inequality is, like, if you put the pawn you've sacrificed slash blundered back on, on the board, is your position only equal or much better? And here, if you imagine, let's say, my pawn still being alive somewhere on the b4 square, I think it's very fair to say my position would have been better, not just equal. Uh, so um, I feel like I have some uh, uh, reasons for kind of quiet optimism. There's definitely some play for the pawn now. Yeah, he wants to go c5, and I want to have a good reply to it. Uh, I'm not sure there is, like, a proper good reply to c5 in positions like this, but, I mean, I could go e6, f e, queen e5, uh, and then knight takes e6 against most moves. Feels slowish, but maybe it's the best I have. I could also try to preparing it with something like queen g3 or queen e3. Uh, also not idiotic.
I'll go with this uh, for now because I think it kind of creates the most immediate, uh, well, I, I was about to call that mayhem, but this is, I mean, very far from mayhem. I'm still fighting for a draw here, but yeah, rook a8 I thought was not great because I have my g5 check there if the rook comes to f5. He does have rook g8, which I didn't properly consider, but I have queen f6 as a reply at the very least. So I think this is a bit of an amnesty for me uh, in this particular position. Like rook f5, knight g5, h takes g, I'm not better. Uh, but it obviously is a huge, huge, big improvement uh, in, in, in my fortunes compared to the previous position. Uh, and also, for some reason, I once again have a minute and 25 against... Uh, uh, against uh, rook takes g5 is an immediate draw, by the way, and then rook takes g2. Uh, so he chooses not to do that. Perhaps he hasn't seen it, or maybe he uh, thinks this endgame is better, which it might be, honestly. Like, uh, it's it's very, very possible Black is doing quite well to begin with. C5 and D4 really needs to be played very quickly here. If you don't play C5, you, like, this now is probably just bad. Uh, yeah, because, like, those pawns will never actually go anywhere. Yeah, this has been a... So far, I think... Uh, uh, I've played game one okay, and games two and three I played kind of horribly, but uh, I have been very, very lucky so far. Yeah, and uh, no more of that. Actually, yeah, let's, uh, let's have no more of that um, uh, C4, E5, Marin. I assume this will not be very exciting either, but I have slightly more recent experience with this. Yeah, I mean, this is this is also, as mentioned, this is also not going to be like the world's most exciting position to play for a win. You know, or even pretend to play for a win, honestly, but it's not unplayable, which is which is good. There are some like actual concrete problems with this setup for Black, which have been uh, explained to me at some point. I believe specifically by Alexander Grishuk, but I kind of don't remember what the problem was anymore. At least not specifically. I remember that Queen on a5 was somehow getting stuck in the center of the board somehow, but I can't even remember in which line. I think the absolute main theory starts here after knight b3, queen a5, c5. This is like the most important uh, line in the position. Uh, but mm, judging by the pause with which uh, Pepe played knight b3, we are probably both of us not entirely certain about move orders in that line which is good for me. And this endgame is sort of supposed to be okay, uh, I think, according to theory, even though I think I played it recently in one of my uh, other streams. I think this has been played against me by somebody in the Don comments. And uh, I definitely did not equalize that game. But I have a feeling I did not equalize that game because I just played it very poorly. Push b3 is probably not the most critical move in the position. Something along, like knight d5 has been played against me in that Don Cummins game I referenced earlier. And I think it's a good move. After bishop b3, of course, the temptation has to be to take on c3, and but, but c5 comes very quickly, so I don't know if that's any good. Push b6 is reasonable, but once again, I have to have a reply to c5. Maybe I'm just supposed to go knight f6 here and, uh, you know, not try to invent the bicycle. It kind of stops my own counterplay along the long diagonal, but if I get to play, I don't know, bishop b6, rook a c8, rook a, or maybe rook f c8 even, and then uh, rook a b8, uh, I should just be fine. Should be a reasonably, maybe I should have played knight e5 there, I don't know. I'm kind of trying to uh, forget the, specifically the position I described, but... 
Yeah, I don't know what happened to text to speech again. It was on and now it's off again. Maybe it's uh uh yeah, I've, I'm not going to tinker with it during the game, obviously. And yeah, bishop d7 specifically because of c5 may have been a reasonably large mistake. Uh, which is stupid because I have I kept on banging on about how c5 is like the absolute main idea white has in this position. And then I went ahead and blundered it anyway. <sighs> kind of ridiculous when you describe it like that, honestly. Don't really have a good like d c five knight c five bishop c eight is what I'm currently considering. But this is like so unbelievably miserable to play chess like that. I I I can barely force myself to even think along those lines. It's just so so horrible. Uh yeah, that's that's an oof. That really is is an oof. Why did I play bishop d seven there? So stupid. I guess we'll try something like this, maybe hoping to put this knight on c4 in some kind of a extremely optimistic near future. You know, maybe that generates some counterplay for me, but mainly I'm just stunned at my own stupidity so far. This has not been a particularly well played match by 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 me up until this moment. I have been bailed out mainly, I think, by Pepe's surprisingly poor time management. More than, you know, anything to do with, you know, moving the wooden pieces on the board. This is not lost by, by any means, but it's it's very, very annoying for black, of course. Yeah, bishop d4 is a is a reasonable reply. The question is where where do I want to put this bishop, which is currently on d7? It probably goes to e6 to um, to have like slightly more options, and also pre 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 uh, preserving the c6 square for for the e5 knight because I expect it to get chased away from the uh, from that square with f4 kind of sooner rather than later. It's a very logical move here. I don't like knight d2. I think knight d2 probably lets me get away with it again. Because now I think I can play d5. I'm not blundering a piece, am I? I don't think I am. I've been known to kind of miscount the number of miscount the number of uh, attacks on a certain square. This has happened in reasonably recent past, but not here. Yeah, now I am somewhat surprisingly. I feel completely fine. Not better, but like we, we don't really deserve to be better in this game. As long as I don't blunder anything here, could just honestly offer a draw. I don't think it's a mistake here. It's not a very bright position, and I don't really, after after the previous couple of games, I don't really feel like trying to flag Pepe in a position where, you know, I've been kind of completely busted. Oh, <laughs> me. All right, so, uh, copy, paste. Yeah, so the open Spanish has to be avoided, but there are ways to avoid the open Spanish. Okay, no more, no no more open Spanish for me. I'm going to be playing, you know, the the quiet line here. Don't particularly want to get engaged with like the riskier lines, such as they are. I've had, you know, recent experiences in this line, and. Uh, hmm. This maybe gives me like a false sense of security in terms of like I might think I know some theory here, but I really, really don't. As I now realize, this probably wasn't the brightest idea in the world either. 
Then again, are there any bright ideas in the world when it comes to my opening preparation? Probably not. Let's try to make this into some kind of a briar type position. Yeah, I think uh, I even had some notes on this some time ago. The idea here is to go knight e2, knight g3, and pretend we're playing a Spanish, uh, which is an opening I have some idea about. We're also sidestepping like the counter play with potential b5 or, uh, or d5 even, although I may have allowed d5 here, but I'm not really that worried about it, honestly. So yeah, now we now we have a very, very typical Briar type setup, but I think you could argue this is slightly better for black than the normal Briar because there is no pawn on b5, and now there is. Okay, I take everything back. Disregard everything I said earlier. I'll, I'll include h3 just for kind of normality's sake. Uh, now it is just a pure briar pretty much and uh, these types of pure briar are normally not entirely equal for black because white has kind of white can combine different ideas here. Uh, but you have to be kind of clever about it which is not easy. I, I'm very tempted by c4, but I'm worried e takes d4 might just equalize on the spot. So I'm, but like it's it's by far the most critical move in the position. I know this much. If if c4 works, it's uh, it's something I definitely should be playing. I feel we could still prepare it for a couple of moves though. Yeah, and it kind of gets, you know, to a, to a certain degree, it gets stronger the longer we wait, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not waiting anymore. The issue is, I played queen d2 now, so after b takes a4, there are definitely some positions in which c4, c5 is a very strong reply to ba4, but... In particular, now that the pawn on b3 will also be hanging because I removed the queen from d1, it's not going to work. So I think I'm reduced to ba4, rook a4, which is not bad, but it's not spectacular. bc4, there's the intention is sort of always to recapture with the bishop. And, uh, but now e takes d4, I guess, is just completely fine for black, maybe. I'm slightly better coordinated though uh, compared to uh, to where Pepe has gone to, uh, has gotten to. Like the bishop is not on g7 yet, the rook is not on d8 yet. Yeah, and this is a huge concession, obviously. If I'm allowed to do this uh, unimpeded and kind of uh, do this to his structure, uh, this position instantly becomes kind of significantly unpleasant to play for Black. Knight takes e5. I mean, d5. Knight g5 might be very, very strong, even or rook takes rook takes rook a d1, queen d6 might become a threat. So I think you want to take a pair of knights off the board here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that structure is still very, very, very annoying. I'm playing before, just to have like c5, b5 ideas to not allow him to uh, straighten out his structure uh, easily at least. Even the end games here are quite uh, sucky uh, for black. I've lost these types of positions with black in my life. They are not pleasant. I mean, they're still playable. In particular, if I somehow allow the knight from f6 to get to like exactly like that, if the knight gets to e6 uh, and then to d4, uh, the, the game clearly will become a lot less clear. Um, clearly will become a lot less clear. Well spoken, Peter. You are so eloquent today. Um, but, yeah, we're not going to be allowing that, obviously. Hmm. Or at least trying not to allow it. Uh, rooks, yeah, 96 has been reestablished as an idea, which is kind of annoying because I was really hoping it would not be uh, playable at any point. 
I don't know. This feels maybe a bit too slow. I have a very specific idea in mind after 96, but the issue is my very specific idea is probably not very strong. Uh, it's still the best I have, so I'll go with it. Yeah, but I may have I may have misplayed this. Yeah, I, I get to do this, but after Bishop F8, I don't actually have a good follow-up. I'm still maybe slightly better, but it's it's very, very marginal now. I should have gone rook a d1, I suspect, to kind of uh, make sure that my rook stays on the d file here. Yeah, allowing this probably wasn't great. But I do have rook d1. I was more worried about uh, king g7 followed by uh, bishop b7. Like, this endgame still has, well, you know, black could still find themselves in, in significant trouble. I actually don't like rook c8 at all, but... Uh, yeah... This is sensible, but also I think there are tactical issues with it. Probably, hopefully, rook d7 is not bad, followed by knight g4. Uh, rook takes e8, followed by knight g4 is also not bad. There's a number of things you can do here. I think this is probably the cleanest. We go knight g4, we kind of more or less force him to go bishop g7, and then we go rook a7 and try to double on the 7th and kind of go in for the kill. Bishop e7, that shouldn't work. I would assume that doesn't work. c5, I guess, but I can just go b takes c5, rook d8. I don't really believe in this. Like, there might be a way to just win on the spot, but I'll go for the technical solution. Yeah, this is mate in two now. So I only have to uh, find one draw in me somewhere. Now in the remaining oh! games. <laughs> no, yeah, and sorry for all the missed subs. I, I tried fixing it, but... It did not take. Hang on a second. The copying did not really take either. Yeah, this should be this should be the the next game. And we have e4. Let's play a Sicilian. Like I'm not gonna leading for one. I think it's going to be uh, a little bit too chicken shit to try and play solidly. I'd much rather kind of h3. Yeah, okay. Um, what's my preferred reply to this these days? I don't really know. Like something along these lines, maybe. Also kind of, I've looked at this from the white side quite a bit. It's very, very playable for white if, uh, if white knows what he's doing, but it's a fun position to play for. This is an interesting choice, though, because it gives me this option of going 97, and now bishop h4 check is something you have to at least pretend to care about. Uh, I don't know if uh, if it's a huge problem. You can go queen d2, bishop f2, I assume, which is not bad at all, but at least it gives my opponent something to, to ponder. Yeah, and g5 I thought was, I mean, unplayable is a strong word, but I was very much hoping to get some kind of 94 e5 play in. Or actually, actually, shall we just play h6? h6, g6 kind of bugs me. Bishop h4 checking d2. It looks really weird, but uh, I don't currently see a good way for me to proceed from that position, which is... Uh, annoying me. And if I take on d4 and go e5, there is queen, queen d2, which is 
Oh, I mean, it's not a difficult move, but I still somehow managed to miss it. I mean, this is more fun, so let's go with this. This is a lot more fun. I understand it's not really a legitimate cho re reason to choose a move after uh, over a different move, but uh, maybe it is. Like, who says it's not? G six bishop h four checking d two. I suspect I have to take on d4 there. Like, I would like to castle, but I think gf followed by knight takes e6 actually is still very, very strong. Uh, so I have to take on d4. He goes gf7, king f7, bishop takes d4. And uh, yeah, it's a really weird position where, like, my king is on f7 for no particular reason, and his king is on d2 for probably even fewer actual reasons that make any sense. I probably would prefer white if I had to guess who is better. I would probably say it's white, but it's a fun position to contemplate. I'm a lot happier about this though. Like this is, this is a dream. Um, we don't really have the option of castling kingside anymore, but we don't really want to castle kingside anymore anyway. And uh, while we're playing for the gallery, let's continue playing for the gallery here, shall we? Bishop takes g5 exists as a move. I just, like, I'm not sure it's great. Yeah, like, I want to make that move because it's a fun move to make, but I also would like to win this game. And those two kind of come, uh, come into conflict here. Uh, annoying. I should be paying attention to like h5, h6 threats. I probably should include knight takes d4 at some point to make sure I don't never blunder h5, h6. Yeah, I feel, I feel like, uh, I have actually chickened out after promising not to chicken out. I should have played bishop takes g5. It's just a fun move to make on the board. Knight takes e6 followed by long castles actually kind of justifies previous play quite well for white here. I probably need to include g7, g6 somewhere. Uh, against this, I was very much planning to play b4 and planning to pretend that I have a strong attack on the queen side now, which I don't. But I do have a very strong pretend attack on the queen side. Queen a5 followed by knight a2 check. If he goes king b1, well, yeah, knight b3. I suspect I'm probably even supposed to just take on e4 here and win that queen and then play against the pieces. Is there anything stronger? There might be something stronger. Rook c3, bc3, I don't think leads anywhere. I don't particularly want to play d6, d5. Yeah, I think we go with the first instinct here. Um, that position is kind of weird with the pieces against the queen, but I think it's probably uh, uh, the good weird for me. Although I'm once again basing this opinion of, you know, nothing much. Also, I don't know if d5 was correct. d5, now that I've looked at it properly, feels like it may have been a mistake. Something like queen a8 was maybe a lot more to the point. Um, I feel like I actually need to include my rook in the game. So I'm going to castle into all kinds of h5, h6 play, but h5, h6 doesn't generally give mate. Also, bishop takes g5 is still a move that I can play in response. Bishop takes a6 is definitely uh, something he could have considered there, but not that worried. And I think I need to start kind of getting to the light pieces around his king. I don't know, queen c7, rook b8. Feels like I'm playing this a little bit too slowly. Bishop f4 is annoying, but not that annoying. I don't know what king b1 is all about, though, allowing me rook b8 with, with the tempo. That seems counterintuitive. 
I don't know about knight c4, but it just felt like it's maybe the like the easiest way for me to play. Let's put it like this, like the the one that requires the the, the least thought. Bishop a3 allows knight b5, which is something I've uh, misevaluated when I was going for this position. But I still have queen b4 there, amazingly. Still works for me, I think. Rook d2, though. No, rook d2 I have uh, a rook c2. That is clever by, by Pepe. I think I have a little bit too little time here to do... Oh, that's just a blunder because I blundered rook b3 here. I'm lost now. I'm pretty sure after rook b3 I'm just flat out lost. Yeah, that was... Yeah, h5 followed by g6 probably just gives mate. Very surprised it hasn't been played. I am being uh, slightly rescued here. And bishop d4 is an oof. Is a very big oof. Uh, yeah. Rook c3. Yeah, let's just, I guess. Yeah, that was just a throw. I, my position was very, very good at one point. That was just a throw. Um, I think uh, I kind of uh, over panicked at one point uh, and tried to kind of simplify my life for no particular reason. Uh, I could have continued playing with more pieces on the board. Knight c4, I think, was the beginning of where it started. Where it started to go wrong, like it wasn't the the absolute final mistake in the game, but. I probably, probably should have done something else. Yeah, the open is not going to make a repeat appearance here. Um, this is also not really all that great, but um, do we care? We don't really. I don't know about a4, and b5, bishop, c5 is very much the reason why people generally prefer to play d3 or move 6 after the bishop has been developed to e7. So Pepe is definitely doing the right thing by, by playing uh, b5 here. I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to do against b4, yeah, exactly. Uh, this, is, this appears to be very playable. Maybe I'm supposed to play a5 and pretend this has all gone swimmingly and according to plan. Followed by bishop b3, knight bg2, and so on. It hasn't really gone according to plan, though. Even bishop takes e3, d6, bishop b6 is fine, but uh, considering the match situation, he might be sort of slightly disincentivized to, to, to go for very kind of boring symmetrical positions here which might even be slightly better for me, for all we know. Then again, maybe not. I mean, this structure, it, it obviously isn't the most exciting structure in the world, but um, it actually is somewhat trickier than you would expect. Yeah, probably shouldn't have allowed d5. This may have been a mistake. d5, now queen d6, queen c5 is something I have to worry about. I'll try this, though. This may have been a bit of a tactical miscalculation by Pepe, because now a6 is kind of hanging after e4, I have knight e5. And he takes d4, queen takes a6, appears to be very advantageous to white as well. He probably should go something like e4, knight e5, queen e8, or queen d6. No, queen d6 is worse. Actually, queen e8, queen e8. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, all the, all the kinds, uh, kind people. I will, I will get to that uh, eventually, I'm sure. Yeah, that position after e4, knight e5, queen e8 is actually a lot less clear than I originally assumed. Because if I take on a6, he takes on e5 twice, and there's knight g4 threats, the pawn on b2 is hanging. It's a lot more annoying than I thought. 
I might have to go e4, queen a6, so you have queen takes c6, but that is very, very unclear. This, I think, is wrong, though, because I think I can... Ah, he probably... No, I don't quite understand what the intention is here. Because e4, knight e5, I get the queens off, and then I have an outside passer on a5, so... Yeah, I missed... I, I, will, I will be entirely honest with you guys. I missed knight takes d4, but I'm still, I feel, reasonably happy about having to play this endgame. Uh, because... You know, I have, don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do have an outside passer here. Uh, the fact that the C file will be open is more annoying than I originally supposed, though, because there will be pressure against my C2 pawn here. Not even sure how I'm supposed to react. Yeah, this is, this is a lot less clear than I presupposed. I'm going for a slightly weird setup with rook on g1 and a knight on e1, which is very awkward, but I'm hoping to like start pushing a6, a7, and, go, and then go knight g3 and pick up the pawn on b4. But yeah, this is, this is very far from the kind of a plain sailing I envisaged when I went for this position. Very, very far from it. Okay, 494, 93, you know, I'm still okay. I think I'm still okay here. I get to double, and then I get to put the knight on d3. And if he goes e4, yes, the knight on e1 will be made to look very stupid for a time, but I think it eventually gets out. And when it does get out, um, black has also completely ruined his situation in the center. Maybe I could have even started with knight d3, but I didn't want to allow rook b6, and then the a a6 pawn kind of is in danger. Yeah, I think this is correct. I think he had to I think he had to do it and uh, uh, it it might not be as easy as I've been originally assuming to get that knight out of the out of the box. Yeah, I think this is right. I think I think what Pepe is doing here is absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, this position is very, very tricky. I need to stop knight g4. Like first order of business is let's not Blunder knight g4 takes e3. And then I think I'm going to go rook a1 and rook b4, if that is allowed to me. Uh, knight d7 is a move, but then maybe I can go c4. Knight d7 now. Knight b4 is still a move I can make, but let's just put the, the pawn on a7 and go from there. This knight on e like with a knight on any other square, my position would have been oh, would have been wonderful. Smash with, your chip bottle just subscribed. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the sub. Uh, I wanted to go h5 here, and then g4, knight g2, and so on. I'm kind of worried about uh, allowing knight g3, but that cannot be helped. That cannot be helped. Maybe I can go c4 here. Yeah, this has gotten very, very weird all of a sudden. <sighs> rook f1. Yeah, rook f1 maybe is smart here. Um, or not. I got myself outplayed again, I think. I don't know how bad this position is. It might be okay. I mean, if the king gets to e3, it definitely is okay, but I don't know if it does. Mm. I think I have to play a five check, which is a very ugly choice, but I don't think I have anything better. Rook c7 is unexpected. Why has this been played? Rook takes c3 is not a threat. I will try to exploit this by attacking some weaknesses. Mm. 
Yeah, this is now very good for me. I mean, I can make a draw, uh, but I don't think I have to. Although, I mean, why not? Let's just make a draw. That, if I didn't miscount, ends, uh, ends the match in my favor. It's been very scrappy, and I think apart from the one uh, Philidor slash Spanish, I have not really played all that well, honestly, but uh, it sort of does count. Uh, Sasha, thanks, uh, thanks for the sub. I'll, I'll, get to, I'll get to all the subs in a moment. Uh, yeah, Pepe is, is absolutely fantastic, Chicken, Mor Chicken Morales. Pepe is... Uh, Pepe is one of the best things to have happened to chess in recent years. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, he has four seconds. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but this also wins me the match. So I don't think I need to continue flagging him in this rook game. This is, uh, you know, this is not a, a race to 3100 or anything. I just, uh, I just need to get the four and a half points, which I think I have done with.